to this day, one of my most popular videos is still a video about my recording setup using the Helix with an audio interface and just going over, like I said, my recording setup. Now things have sort of changed, but still stayed the same. And what do I mean? Well, things are in different spots. I'm using different brains, i.e. a different computer. I've gone back and forth between Mac and PC. Now I'm in a luxurious position, I recognize, to have both a PC and a MacBook Pro. So I guess you could say I get the best of both worlds, but I still lean very heavily on the MacBook. I, I just prefer the Apple ecosystem. Don't come at me, all right? That's, that's not what this video is about. I have a PC over here that I built, so calm your jets, relax, just shut up. We develop preferences and workflows as we do things for an extended amount of time, and off, I'm not gonna justify that. So we're gonna do an updated version of my recording setup, or my recording setups, using Line 6 Helix, HX Stomp, a quick rundown on everything it is that I prefer to use, and a brief overview of kind of how everything is connected. So let's dive in. So my main rig is back over here. It is an Apple MacBook Pro 16 inch with a M1 Max, 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte hard drive or SSD to be more precise. Now, for those of you who don't know, my main gig, my main full-time job is that of a video editor and a director of photography. I shoot videos for a living. So for what I do on an everyday basis, that MacBook Pro kills it, slays it, all of it. We can leave that conversation to rest, it doesn't matter. On top of that, I can produce all my music on it. So that's what I do. The setup is not that much different from when I had my PC before, my iMac after that, my PC after the iMac, my MacBook Air after that, my Mac Mini after that, and now this MacBook Pro, and also the PC that I have built. So why don't we go through the signal flow on the main setup? First and foremost, we have that MacBook Pro. While there are three Thunderbolt 4 ports on the MacBook, I need more ports, straight up. So I have an Echo 11 Thunderbolt 4 dock plugged into one of the Thunderbolt ports. I have a 32 inch second monitor for viewing because I'm blind plugged into the HDMI port. And of course, as you can see, I have a third monitor, which is a color accurate monitor, again, for my video editing work and color correction. So I have most of my devices plugged into the Echo 11 Thunderbolt 4 dock. As far as audio interfaces goes, I have been using this same Presonus 1824 USB for years now. It's rock solid, it's nothing fancy, it's USB 2.0. It does exactly what I need for what I do. It has more inputs than I currently need and have needed thus far, although having the ability to use multiple inputs, which I have used on occasion, whether it's re I'm recording vocals or other instruments or acoustics, has been great and it's why I prefer to have an audio interface with multiple ports for my main rig, my main recording rig. Next, of course, I am a Helix user and running into the Personas 1824 via SPDIF is my Helix rack. Now, in my previous setup videos, I have either run my HX Stomp or my Helix Rack into the audio interface via quarter inch jacks or XLRs. That's still a viable option and the sound difference is negligible. You won't be able to tell. The main reason I decided to go via SPDIF was to free up some inputs and also on this particular audio interface, when you turn on phantom power, it applies it to all of the inputs and not necessarily a good thing to apply phantom power to a device that doesn't need phantom power, i.e. when I was going out of the Helix into the 1824 via XLR cables. I didn't want to send phantom power to it. I wasn't, I, I didn't want to run the risk of messing something up. So when I run things through SPDIF, I don't have to worry about that. I can turn phantom power on and still use my microphone when I need to use it without worry or concern. Speaking of microphones, the microphone I use when I'm streaming or doing various voiceovers recordings is the Presonus PD70. Essentially, it is an SM7B clone at a fraction of the price, and it's a stellar microphone. Enough said. As far as MIDI input and surface controllers, I'm using the Presonus Atom for drum pads, and then I'm using the Native Instruments Complete Control S32 key. This one works perfect for what I need and what I need to accomplish. You may or may not be able to hear it, but the heat kicked on, so I'm sorry. Now, for my main audio monitors, I'm using the same monitors I've used for 
eight years at this point, something ridiculous like that. I'm using the JBL LSR 308s. Great monitors. I don't use them as much as I should, but for me, they work great. They sound great. There's enough flexibility on the back of the monitors to control the high end, the low end, etc. Great monitors. Haven't had an issue with them. Some last tidbits. I have an Elgato Stream Deck for my live streams, as well as an Elgato Low Profile Mic Boom Arm that holds the Personas PD70. So I got the PC hooked back up, and it is my secondary setup, if you will. I'm primarily using it for mixing and sound design stuff for some of the video work I'm doing. But I can do recording over here, and I have done recording, and it is also a very simple setup. The audio interface over here is a Presonus 24C, just a small bus-powered USB-C interface. Now it's USB 2, but it's over USB-C, it's bus-powered, and it's great. The monitors over here that I'm using on the PC setup are the Presonus Aris E 4.5. I promise I am not sponsored by Presonus. I just love their stuff. It's rock solid. It's great sounding, great bang for the buck. So I got the Presonus monitors running into the bus powered Presonus interface, the 24C. For MIDI input over here, as far as keyboard goes, I have the Complete Control A25, I believe it's called. A little bit bigger than the keyboard controller that I have over there, um, but less keys. If that makes sense less keys but overall a bigger device more keys more compact device the headphones that sit over on this desk are the bear dynamic dt 700 pro x's great quality great sounding closed back headphones you can't go wrong with bear dynamic in my opinion the headphones i have on the main setup are the bear dynamic 990 pro 250 ohm open back headphones i've used them for years now they sound great i'm used to their sound signature I'm mixing them a lot. Some of my favorite headphones, and I, I have highly recommended them to many people before. Now on the PC setup, if I'm gonna record guitars, I can either go line in using plugins, which um, I'm not a fan of. I've made that pretty obvious. It's just not how I, how I work. I don't like that kind of workflow. I don't wanna worry about latency. I wanna be able to kind of, to, to record and compose and mix at the same time. And if you're using more and more plugins and VST instruments, but also recording. You need to have your block size typically larger. It's becoming less and less an issue. The more powerful CPUs get, and especially in the case of the M1 back there, but you know, if you're stacking plugins and using VSTs, typically you want a bigger block size so that your computer can handle more of it. Bigger the block size, the more processing power kind of allows to The way I like to record, the way I like to work is to plug in a guitar, have a sound, commit to it, and we're off and running. Now if I want Helix sounds, I can plug in direct over here and use Helix native, but again, I don't like playing through plugins, even Line 6 plugins. So what I will do is plug in my HX Stomp via quarter inch cables into the audio interface and record guitar that way. Then I don't need to worry about the block size, I can just monitor right through the audio interface have my block size all the way up. I can hear in real time what's coming through the Helix and record and not worry about a thing. So I can stack my VST plugins. I can stack my virtual instruments. I've explained this before. That's the way I prefer to work. So when I want Helix sounds over here, I can do that. I could even run quarter inch cables from the Helix rack over here into this audio interface and have the Helix Rack plug into both of these simultaneously if I wanted. So I have that flexibility. And believe it or not, I know that sounds like a lot of stuff. I know it is a lot of stuff. It's a lot of crap, but when you boil it down, it's just a guitar running into some sort of device that produces some sort of guitar tone, running into an audio interface, running into a DAW. That's it. That's, that's my setup. For me, I rarely record DI tracks. It's something maybe I probably should, but I like to sculpt my tone in the Helix get it as close to mix ready as possible. If I have to tweak something in the mix, that's what I do. Because I've used the Helix for so long, I'm usually not doing much post work on my guitar tones. I try to get it right at the source, which my source is the Helix Rack or the HX Stomp. Now for all the nerds out there, one thing that I've really kind of gravitated towards, A, because again, my full-time job is pretty much to sit behind computers and edit. And when I'm not editing, I'm out filming, but I do more editing and I do a lot of post-production work, 
And one thing that I've really fallen in love with are these. And this is the sign of a true nerd or potentially an old fuck. I have been using these ergonomic mice. This is one by Logitech, a full-size mouse. Uh, basically, this is how a normal mouse would kind of be orientated, but it puts it at an angle. So it sits flat, you put your hand on it, and what this prevents is your wrist from turning. And I know this sounds ridiculous. Why is this in this video? But hey man, I'm sold on it. It helps wrist strain. I've had in the past wrist problems from playing around with a mouse too much, quite frankly. I also have one over here for the little setup. This is a more compact and this usually goes in my travel bag when I have to travel for work. Uh, again, man, these things are lifesavers. And I think if you value your wrist as a guitar player, you might want to think about one of these. Now, I recognize I didn't go into great detail into all the specs of every piece of gear I use because that's not the point. I think the point is the workflow especially on the Mac. The nice thing about the Mac is you can create what's called an aggregate device. I have a very old video about this, basically where you can combine two audio interfaces and the Mac will see it as one. You can do that over here. So I can have one giant interface that is both the Presonus 1824 and the Helix Rack working together. So I could, if I wanted to, run the process sound into a DAW as well as DIs. Again, if I wanted to, it's not the way I work. So you have that flexibility over on the Mac side. There are finicky ways of doing it on the PC and they don't always work and they sometimes break. But again, my workflow is just run that Helix rack via some sort of cable into your audio interface and then you don't need to worry about any of that. But if for some reason I do need to record DIs, I can do it via USB. I'll just switch the active audio interface over to the Helix and switch stuff into the DAW. It's not that big of a deal. It's a couple of extra steps, but if it's something that I'm doing for someone else and they want the DI, I am capable of doing that. I have the technology. It's just not how I work. And I know I've said that a thousand times, but you have to take all of that into consideration. This is how I work. This is what I've developed over the years. The main consideration should be what's gonna allow you to be creative without obstacles or hurdles. When you sit down in front of your machine, whether it's a PC or a Mac, do you have everything you need to make music in as short amount of time as possible? Now, I've been doing this for many, many years. I've worked very hard. I've had full-time jobs, sometimes multiple full-time jobs. I've had various side gigs simultaneously. So I've put myself in a position to have all of this stuff. And, it, and to a lot of people, I'm sure it's a bit of a flex. I don't intend it to be a flex at all. And if you're taking it that way, then I think you need to reassess the way you're looking at things. I'm just showing my setup because people have been interested. But the point, the main point is you can use something like this USB powered small PreSonus audio interface with your guitar and a guitar cable and a modest PC. As a matter of fact, my M1 MacBook Air from two years ago was more than capable of recording and I did a lot of recording. As a matter of fact, all of the tracks for the Detra Cortina album were recorded via the HX Stomp going into the Mac Mini M1. Straight up. It's all I used, it's all I needed. This setup appeases my nerdy creative mind and I've put myself in a position to kind of set it up this way. So I hope that kind of answers some questions about my setup, how I have things connected. If you guys want anything more as far as information goes, or some more detailed explanation into one piece of this whole setup, leave a detailed comment down in the description. And if it makes sense, and if it's not something that I feel like you can figure out on your own that needs more explanation from me, then maybe I'll make a video on it. I try to get back to as many people as possible, so long as your comment's not stupid. And even if it is, sometimes I'll leave something sarcastic on that comment, but that is a, another video for a whole nother time. That's going to be it for this one, guys. I know it was a lot of me talking, a lot of nerdy shit, but I hope again, it gives you kind of an idea of how you could potentially set up your recording setup. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support. If you're looking for other ways to support me and the channel and what I'm doing here, I of course have music for sale on Bandcamp and my webpage and streaming everywhere music is streamed. On NickHillMixMusic.com, you can find all of my Helix presets, all of my impulse responses, uh, Podgo preset packs, there's an FM3 preset pack, there's all sorts of digital goodies, 
at nickhillmakesmusic.com, including all the music that I've ever put out can all be found there. It's kind of your one-stop shop for everything that I've done so far. I should have links for most of the things I use in my setup down below in the description. Those links are affiliate links. They don't make things any more expensive, but I do get a little bit of a percentage if you happen to buy or purchase through any one of those links. It just helps the channel. Every little bit helps. That's going to be it, guys. Take care of yourselves, be useful to someone, and we'll see you in the next one. Lord, it's just me talking the whole time. No one really wants to hear me talking for that long.